Thank you to Ms. S for explaining why reading is so important. Click the link if you haven't seen that video. But great, yeah. Now I have an overwhelming sense that I need to get reading. And I feel guilty because I don't read as much as I should. What can I do about it? I have to admit, even as an English teacher, second only to librarians in terms of the type of person you expect to read a lot, I don't have great reading habits. In 2019, I finished two books, total. That's not good. In my defence, I have a lot of hobbies and a busy and tiring job. At the end of a long day of teaching, marking essays and reading books out loud, the last thing on my mind is sitting still and reading more. I want to watch films, browse YouTube and work through my Steam back catalogue. Yeah, I'm also not good at finishing games. But I decided to make reading one of my New Year's resolutions. And so far this year, I have finished seven books. So here's my top 10 of ways to increase the amount you read. Number one, leave the book somewhere that you will be comfy. If you leave a book on the sofa where you flop down at the end of a long day and put the remote just slightly further away, you might find yourself picking up the book just to avoid doing a setup. That's how I started my last book and it was great. Number two, get an ebook downloaded onto your phone. You might find yourself somewhere one day waiting for someone with no signal or little data. Perfect time to start a book. Number three, ask friends for recommendations. Sometimes just choosing a book can be really overwhelming. After making a few dud choices, you start to think, maybe I just don't like reading. But that's like saying I don't like food after eating nothing but olives. Great food does exist, they're just not olives. And I can guarantee that there's a book out there that you will like. Who will know better what kind of thing you might like than your friends? So ask them. Number four, read different things, not just what you used to or expected to. When you're a certain age, there are books designed and aimed at you. Young adult fiction is an amazing genre with so much to choose from, but it isn't the only type of books that exist. Books don't have an age rating, so challenge yourself to read stuff that maybe isn't what people are expecting you to read. You never know what you're capable of until you try. Plus, It the Film is an 18. It the Book is for any ages. Just don't come crying to me when you can't sleep because the book is way scarier than the movie. Number five, reading challenges. Ms. S has a scratch-off poster with a hundred important books that everyone should read. She's working her way through them. It's like Pokemon, gotta catch them all. People love collecting things, it scratches an itch. I set myself the goal to finish one book a month. It keeps it fresh and active and gives me something to aim towards. If you're the kind of person that likes a challenge, set yourself one and gamify your reading habit. Number six, use Audible. Audible is great, but it's not a replacement for reading. You need to see words to spell words. You might, however, find audiobooks and podcasts like the New Yorker Story podcast really helpful in expanding your ideas of what you do and don't like in fiction. Plus, you will expand your vocabulary and they can be great things to listen to while exercising or gaming. Number seven, finish books. Don't just keep starting new ones. As I said earlier, I only finished two books in 2019. That was bad. But I started a bunch of books and was halfway through others that I'd started in previous years. I was just in a really bad habit of wandering off and not finishing a book I'd started. It's totally fair enough to leave a book alone if you started it, and it sucks. But if that becomes a pattern, there's something you have to accept. It's not the books. It's you. Set yourself a goal to make sure you finish the next book you start, or limit the number of books you're allowed to reject after starting. It'll make reading far more satisfying, and you'll become a lot more careful about what you pick up off the shelf. Number eight. Promise yourself a reward if you do finish. Set yourself a goal, then give yourself a treat if you manage to stick to it. It's an easy idea, and it really does help to reinforce good behaviours. It doesn't have to be money or food. Maybe you give yourself more time to do a fun activity that you don't normally get around to. Number nine, don't waste time reading pointless things. One of the reasons I struggle to make time for reading for fun is because I read all day, every day. Essays, jot of work, government documents, meeting minutes, the back of food packages. By the time I cuddle up on the sofa with a good book, my eyes are knackered. Consider blocking out any pointless reading you can. How many words a day do you read on social media scrolling through posts? Can you replace that with some fiction which might help you more in the long run? Number 10. Find books with short chapters or read short story collections. If, like me, your attention span has been destroyed by having all of the world's information at your fingertips and kitten videos, then you might struggle if you launch yourself into the latest George R. R. Martin tome. 
but books with short chapters or short story collections can be a great help. Check to see where the next chapter is. Oh, it's only three pages. I'll just read to there, then I can go for a snack. Great three pages? When's the next chapter finish? Okay, just one more. Before you know it, it's 2am, you've finished a 500 page novel and you've loved every second. So that was my top 10 ways of getting into a better reading habit, but I think it's important to remember Reading isn't something that everyone loves to do, and it may be the case that you never love reading. Just because English teachers find it fun, and we do, doesn't mean you will, but it is really important. I hate exercise. I do it because I've spent so much time nourishing my brain, and I know that I need my body to carry it around. I use an exercise bike because it's indoors, it's away from people, and it leaves me with no excuses, rain or shine, to get some exercise done. If you hate reading, you just need to figure out the least painful way to get into it, keep up a routine, and reap the rewards. Good luck.